they may have lost a pound and a half in training and building the body mass, and they just completely reverse it on, on one evening. It's just kind of crazy. What you guys need to know is, ideally, you might probably want to maintain about the same weight. Some of you guys may want to gain some weight, especially around football season. Some of the women may want to lose some weight if they're trying to run faster, or maybe want to gain some weight if they're trying to have more body positioning uh, when they're posting up in basketball. It just kind of depends upon what your position is. But ideally, calories consumed really needs to be about the same as calories expended. And an easy way of looking at it is RMR is your resting metabolic rate. If I was to bonk you over the head, put you in a coma for 24 hours, how many calories do you need to maintain your body for 24 hours? All right? Mine's like 1370. I only need 1300 calories in 24 hours. Some of the guys up front, you might need like 2400, and some of the other people might need 1800. But about your resting metabolic rate, there's something called the thermic effect of food, which you probably haven't even heard of. But as you're eating your lunches right here, about 10 to 12 percent of the calories that you take in on a daily basis are actually burned to utilize, metabolize, and absorb the food that you brought in or that you've taken in. It actually burns calories to, to eat. Okay? But this is the other big piece is physical activity. And that's where the sports nutrition piece comes in is that you guys are active and you need to know how to eat and what to eat to make sure that you're performing at your best. So maybe find yourself up in this area, okay? How many pounds are you thereabouts, all right? And how would you rate what it is that you do? If you're on the golf team, you're really going at a pretty low pace for about four or five hours, maybe even six, depending upon how many holes you're playing. If you're playing soccer, my guess is you guys are probably working out real hard for about an hour and a half, maybe an hour 45, and then maybe some lifting and stuff in there. Same thing with football or softball, depending upon what you're doing. But based on how many pounds you are, how many calories it might be that you actually have to expend and or take in on a daily basis. Okay, what you need to know as athletes is that there's three big micronutrients, right? Carbohydrate, protein, and fat. And where you need to focus your energy is on focusing on carbohydrates. Um, carbohydrates are what your body runs on, all right? Your muscle is like a sponge, and the stored form of carbohydrate is something called glycogen. And you want to keep your muscles full, okay, of glycogen. And the nice thing about carbohydrates is when you take them in, they tend to reach your muscles pretty quickly. Um, but glycogen is your primary energy source. So what happens when you're exercising is for about the first 20 minutes, you're going to burn carbohydrates. But if we're going to exercise for, let's say, two hours, after about 20 minutes, there's no way we can go, you know, balls out 110% of what we're supposed to be doing for 20 minutes. So we, maybe we're going to exercise at like 70%, right? So after about 20 minutes, the use of carbohydrates begins to tail off. And at about 20 minutes, the use of fat begins to increase. So when you deal with people, or when I deal with people, they say, yeah, I was on the bicycle for 20 minutes three times this week, and I haven't really been able to lose anything. If you're looking at trying to lose weight or lose fat mass, it tends to happen after about 20 minutes when you start utilizing uh, fat that you'd have as a fuel. Okay. But what you guys need to think about is that if you're exercising for an hour and a half or two hours, you're going to be using fat, but you have to have carbohydrate available. Otherwise, you do what's hitting the wall. You don't have that glycogen available to your muscles, and the only thing that your brain runs on is sugar. Okay, it's the only thing is carbohydrate. So have you seen those ads for Gatorade about a year or two ago when somebody would hit the wall, or they, they, they couldn't run anymore because they weren't thinking? They ran out of carbohydrates available to the brain to think and available to the muscles to use. What you guys have to remember is about two-thirds of your plate needs to be carbohydrate. Vegetables, fruits, pasta, bread, cereal, okay, and some things like milk or other products contain some carbohydrate, a little bit of protein, and possibly a little bit of fat, depending upon how it mixes. But as an athlete, you want to have carbs. In fact, they do study upon study, and they look at three groups of individuals. They feed one group a relatively high carbohydrate diet, one group kind of a mixed diet, and one group a relatively low carbohydrate diet. And they exercise these people day after day after day. And their ability to recover for the group that has a high carbohydrate diet is a lot better because the next day you're able to exercise at the same pace, and the next day after that. And you can get an idea of a person and or these groups of individuals on a high carbohydrate diet have a lot longer maximal endurance time okay, at the same VO2 max or at the same effort than the people on the lower diets, of the lower fat and lower uh, protein diets. 
So, you know, without throwing science at you, because people are going to say, well, what do I need to eat? What you need to do is look at how many pounds you are, or how many kilograms you are, depending upon how you want to look at yourself, and figure out how many grams of carbohydrate do you need a day, okay? And so if you're going to be exercising for an hour to two hours, we're looking at about eight to nine grams per kilogram, or about, let's say, three and a half to four grams per pound of body weight. Okay, once you get this stuff done, okay, and you can kind of see actually how it varies down here. Maybe a 150-pound student who goes to aerobics a few times a week versus a 165-pound uh, soccer player who exercises for two hours a day. It really is a major difference in how many grams of carbohydrate they're going to need. Okay, so what good does that do if you don't know how many grams? I mean, you guys go up to the upstairs and you're like, okay, well, how many grams are in a thing of rice or how many grams are in a thing of raisin bran? Well, let's look at a male soccer player, okay? 165-pound guy exercising during the peak of soccer season for a couple hours every day anyway. And we determined that he needs about 675 grams of carbohydrate based on the information from the previous page. It's a fair amount. What does it look like? Okay. It's not kind of cookie crazy. It's kind of what you'd normally have. You know, maybe some cereal and some milk, um, a couple of bagels in the morning, yogurt, uh, beans. You know, you can kind of read. Um, Sports drink, which I'm a big proponent, and we'll talk a little bit about hydration, of sports drinks, of the Gatorade style thing, okay? Um, and having a Coke or something as well. It's not weird, it's not anything out of the ordinary. But it's focusing on healthy carbohydrates at the, at the different meals. So let's talk a little bit about protein, because this is where most of the fallacies come from, okay? Is what about protein? Well, you guys have to have it for muscle growth and muscle repair. You break down your muscles lifting or playing or doing whatever it is, and you want to rebuild your muscles. You've got to have it. But protein does not really provide energy to working muscles. When your glycogen stores are lower, when your carbohydrate stores are low, it gives you about 5% energy. Okay, or excuse me, when they're high, it's about 5% energy. When they're low, it's only about 10%. So you cannot use protein as an energy source. It just doesn't really work that way. The body's not great at breaking it down and utilizing it. But it does aid in the repair and recovery after exercise, and I'll touch on that in a few slides as well. Now, there might be some people with higher protein needs, all right? If you're at the beginning of football season, and I'm going to pick on football players here because most of you guys really kind of want to bulk up and be relatively strong so you knock the crap out of the other guy across the field from you, right? Um, if you're in a new training program, two a day, or you guys are beginning to lift a whole lot, or um, any of the, uh, I know there's softball players in here, maybe there's some basketball players and other things. When you begin to um, kind of build and build and big up this way, cut, get ripped, that type of thing, however you guys want to say it, you might